Chill, Matt G, the Ghost Lady, and Len Moleko. Yenda, Vareme, Ne. Do you know what that means, bro? Azit. It means Azit, bro. It means Azit and Vinda. Who run it, brother? Welcome to this another episode of Podcast and Chill, and today I'm chilling with one of my favorite comedians. Love this guy, man. Uh, we're coming at you live from once in Joburg in Bramfontein. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Loisa Matinga. <laughs> Has anyone ever had your job? Like oh, yeah. Never, actually. <laughs> I'm just missing a beep, 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 beep. But I'm, I'm serious, dude. Like, you are one of my favorite comedians, dude. When I watched your special, I gotta say, uh, and I know Trevor Noah doesn't watch this show, so it's cool I can say this. <laughs> You're special. Ah, I enjoyed it more than Trevor. Maybe he watches your shit, bro. <laughs> don't, don't, don't bring yourself down, bro. Uh, but I enjoyed your special more than Trevor, did. Oh, thank you, man. Dude, yours was funny, well, bro. Yeah, thank you, my G. How Which you one did you watch? I watched the one in Canada, I think. Oh, the Montreal special. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. yeah. Yes. On Netflix. Yeah. How much did they pay you for that? Enough. <laughs> The billion dollars enough. Yeah, 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 man. <laughs> you know when you're happy the rand is weak. <laughs> <laughs> when you're like, yeah, 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 Zuma needs to stay, man. This guy's doing the best. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it was, it was, it was a dope experience, though, bro. Yeah. Like those guys know, like uh, you, you get a taste of of what the A listers might. Not even like a taste of what they get because mm. we had like they put us up, they flew us there, business class. Yeah. They have you like backstage. You have a runner, okay? Like a, a runner boy. <laughs> like this person is is just there to make you happy. Like you just mention something. Yeah. You just walk into a room. You're like, yeah, it's a bit cold in your head. Someone will go, oh, I'll have the change, sir. <laughs> they run out and go, and you're like, damn. <laughs> so they treated us well, man. Netflix From the village well. to Montreal, dude. You, ain't none of that in the village. Bruh. There's no runner in the village. It's ABC. Try that shit. <laughs> They have one temperature. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And did they know you when you got that side? It was weird. I'm like, no, 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 no. The answer is no. Yeah. But I bumped into like one or two people who were like, hey, you're Lois Medina. I love your work. I, I, you're my, I'm such a fan. You're like, where are you from? And they're like, people from Montreal. So you're just like, where would they even have seen you? But yeah. that's the beauty of the internet, you know? Yeah, yeah. The internet has just opened up the door. So you can't have. You can't think in borders anymore. If you think in borders, you're limiting yourself. Because the world is open now, bro. Yeah, it's become so small, bro. It's become so small. I mean, small. we have people watching this podcast from like China, uh, Denmark, really? Germany. And I'm like, what? Why would you want to watch this crap? Believe <laughs> <laughs> in yourself, bro. What is this shit? <laughs> <laughs> bro, you from Limpopo, bro. I mean, isn't there anything better to do in Germany than watch a no, podcast from I South Africa? people realize how dope this place is. Did and you hear my accent? Wanna... South Africa? <laughs> South Africa, baby. <laughs> South Africa, because they don't understand if you if you don't get your accent, like their words, they don't understand in the states, or it's more like America, because they like you don't realize just how different they speak to us. So, I've had a couple like in in New York where you you order water, and like, can I have a glass of water? And they're like, excuse me, and you're like uh, water, what? I just want, I just want a, just a glass of tap water. Yeah, <laughs> look at you like, what is this person saying? And you go water, and they're like. <laughs> Oh, water. Oh, like, like, they look at you like, what? It, why would you say water? And you're like, you guys need to get out of this place, man. You guys need to see that the rest of the world is. World. Yeah, bro. Dude, I'm, I'm getting a hint of Trevor Noah's accent when you talk. Do you get that a lot? Um, when I talk? Yeah. I wouldn't know. He sound, like That's what he would say. He'd say something like that. I think it's just private school education. <laughs> I think that's what you're hearing. So just, am I speaking out of my nose enough? <laughs> <laughs> That's Dude, weird because he he grew up here, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. and I was in Eastern Cape, Kokstad. Mm. Mm. But I do get that thing of people always ask me like, like mid conversation, why people would be like, "So what school did you go to?" And I know what they mean by that. They yeah. don't care about the school. They just want to know like, why do you speak <laughs> so like better than uh, the others? <laughs> Hi, what did you do? Hi, where were you? Are you in exile, baby? Hi, <laughs> dude, we're not even like ten minutes in the interview. I'm already in stages, dude. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be dead by the end of this episode, bro. But you're working with Trevor now on the Daily Show, right? Yeah, yeah. Would you? Da- uh, so I'm a South African correspondent. Yeah. For the Daily Show, mm. but uh, so, so everyone you, asked. That, everyone, people were always like, "So when did you get back to the country?" I'm like, "Guys, I'm here all the time." <laughs> That's what I asked you. The first thing I mentioned. Yeah, the first thing I'm you like, asked me was, "Are you in and out of the country?" Nah, bro, I'm based here. We create the work here. Um, 
and then we send it off to the guys there because it's about you. So you got to be in the mix mm. to to make the thing work, you know. And you've you've met him, obviously. Yeah, the first time I met Trevor was. 2014, we did the Nation Wild tour. Mm. And oh, so you guys go way back. Uh, oh, gee, it's been five years, I guess. Yeah, mm. I guess you can say we're yish back now. Yeah. But that was the first time I met Trevor. And that was only because the guys he had put on the lineup, which was like Dylan Willifant and, and Robbie Collins and the guys. Robbie, they're like, uh, Trevor was like, I need one more person. You guys recommend another young act who's up and coming. And those guys happened to know me and they were like, ah, bring Lois on to the tour. Mm. And I literally met him. At a Nando's, in um, at a Nando's on our way day one, yeah. we're gonna drive to what's that area? White Vitbank. Mm. We're gonna drive and he's to such our a dope guy. Hey, fucking cool Chill, guy, bro. bro. He's just a Chill. dude, man. Comics are just. Was he Mr. Cell Seed back then? Eh? No, was... this was post, but this is when he was moving. He had moved to overseas already. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. This was, yeah. Shit, so Cell Seed was like man. 2011. Yeah. Yeah, this was like, yeah. he was oh, no, no longer, he was, he was already no Trevor. Here, no, he was already Trevor. Yeah. I think it was on the, he was on the Daily Show then. Mm. I think it was on the Daily Show then. So, so when you starstruck, dude? For a second. And mm. then he's just a dude. And then you're like, yeah. and then you're just talking shit. Yeah. He makes, he makes the worst jokes in real life. <laughs> The dumbest jokes. He just like by the end of the first ride, I was like, I'm tired of this guy's jokes. <laughs> I'm tired. <laughs> this, is, this is exhausting. Yeah. But he's just a chill dude. Who, so we're with him and uh, Eugene Koza was also part of the thing. Yeah. So they're boys from back in the day. So they were just riffing and playing. Like you look like you're a product of uh, Pure Minati, PMS. Yeah, bro. You are, ne? PMS. Yeah, my dog. Oh, That's my man, shit. That's so cool. That's my, my shit. Don't leave mind. me hanging, dog. Don't leave oh, me hanging. <laughs> So I was in the reverie. I was in the reverie. I was, here's, and, I, and, I, and I make a joke about it in my in my first stand up because mm-hmm. we had a generator, rural rural living generator that was running on diesel back in the days. So we had to switch that thing off like at 10 p.m. But if you remember, Pure Monati played at 10 on a Friday. Yes. So we would be pushing the generator bro. We would after be live like, or something. Yeah, bro. yeah, yeah after live, <laughs> mm-hmm. and we would be pushing the generator. We shouldn't be up. And we'd be watching yeah. Pure Monati show, bro. I loved. I didn't even because you know Eastern Cape. We have two languages yeah. at the most. Well, different uh, local languages, yeah. which would be Sesotho if you're up north, mm-hmm. Eastern Cape, or just it's Tos. Yeah. So I didn't even understand the the Tswana parts of the show. But it was that, still funny as hell. Yeah, but it was still just like you just got oh, this. Man. These guys were living the dream, And there were so dream, many different bro. characters, like comedians-wise. There was uh, the white guy. What was his name? Chris Forrest. Chris Forrest. Very dry. Had, he had his dryness. He also had the character where... Cajes uh, Litija as well. Cajes Litija was on Inori Lomidom, which was uh, Ronnie... Uh, Ronnie... Ronnie... Ronnie was... <laughs> Ronnie legend. killed me, bro. What a legend. Yeah. What a legend. Yeah. He was... I think we had his character, Inori Lomidom, who read the news. Yeah. Was, I was just like, well, this is the wittiest, smartest... Dude, I have ever heard in my life. Yeah. Now he made me like really love the show. So now you start getting into like Eddie Murphy, Delirious. Is that when you're like, fuck, I want to do this for the rest of my life? So that was first. That was first. That was, I think, um, Delirious was the first piece of stand up I heard as like an hour special. And that wasn't even, I didn't watch it. I think I, think I only saw the actual video years later. This is back in the days of like audio clips, mm. you know, on Winamp. Mm. And <laughs> Winamp, Winamp, my, my man. nigga. <laughs> Back in the days of Winamp, my man, and... Uh, it feels I like we're traveling listen, back in time. Yeah, back, <laughs> back. Yeah, yeah. And I would listen to this... Every time I went to my friend Roberto's house, we would listen to Delirious. The first thing we'd do is get to his place, listen to Delirious before we even start our day. Mm. And I just thought this was... Like, how is this guy doing this mm. as a living? Mm. Like, how is this a thing that mm. you get to do this? And, and he I was does like, it was seemingless when you watch Eddie Murphy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's he, like a master. Like, he had like... Stupid confidence, bro. yeah, yeah, crazy. Like, he had mad yeah. confidence, but by then he was huge, yeah. you know. He was coming off SNL where he was just like blowing up on another level. He had a couple movies out and stuff, so he was already just like a what giant about, uh, in the game. Richard Pryor, were you a fan of him? I only caught up on Richard Pryor when I got him to stand up. Ah, he's and legend, then bro. you realize when you watch Richard Pryor, you understand you how all see these comics, everyone yeah. else, yeah, yeah, you yeah. see Martin Lawrence, yeah. you see Delirious. You see all those things, you go, oh, this guy made it. Yeah. This guy created this thing that we now know as yeah. stand-up. He broke it for a lot of people. Because before especially it was like, black comics. Especially black comics. Mm. But like a lot but like comedy comedy in general, because a lot of guys were just doing jokey jokes before. You know, you come you come to your one line and 
and the horse walked in and it was a uh, and it was it was a cow, John. It was a cow. <laughs> And then here comes Richard Pryor telling stories, yeah. man. When he Fuck does that, this shit. Yeah, man. <laughs> Who's just dropping in bombs everywhere. And that story, he do, the gag he does about when he's, he's fighting, yeah. the boxer. Yeah. Uh, and his legs go, you motherfucker, we out of here, man. Mind, mind, mind blowing. Yeah. Mind blowing. When you look at the shift from what was happening before yeah. to when he was doing it, you just go, this guy was on another level. So thank you to cocaine. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, cocaine. <laughs> <laughs> cocaine for the culture. <laughs> oh, I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> so listen, all right, let's talk about you now, right? So yeah. East London, you grew up, all right, cool. And I start working in advertising, and then you decide, fuck it. I want to pursue comedy. Yeah, man. So I came to, <laughs> so I came to Joburg, one, to study. Was I was a shit student, mm. Okay. But my father really wanted us to do like engineering. Okay. But you know you gotta apply by June for engineering. Mm -hmm. But my marks weren't good enough in June, and then I matriculated. I and don't then know, I, but let's just say I do. Yeah, did you? <laughs> you don't even know. He was like, no, I knew where. I knew my place. I stayed in my lane. So I tried to get out of my lane, bro. And I was just like, came to Joburg to apply, and it was full, bro. There's no. Where did you try no, to apply? Everywhere. Oh, okay. I even went to Pretoria. Mm. There's no applying for engineering by that time of the year. And did you have family in Joburg or you came? Like my sister was here. Oh, so okay, I stayed so, with my sister. Okay, yeah. cool. She was an engineer. Ah. So she, I'm, I'm sure she was just looking at me like, oh, shame. shame. Oh, shame. <laughs> oh, a boy can dream. Yes. <laughs> and so I went and I just had this application to an advertising school that I had been carrying around with me. So I was like, ah, fuck it. Let me just, let me throw it in the mix. And then they called me two days later and said, you accepted and we start school in three days. And you knew nothing about advertising. It's not your passion. It was an interest. Like, it was oh, something okay. I wanted to do because I wanted to do... I knew I was a creative person. Oh, okay. so So, advertising was a way to do something creative, but it's still a job. Yeah. You know what you I mean? You can do cool, cool shit. And and you can do dope shit yeah. from, from the outside. Yeah. And so... I get into advertising. I have to tell my dad now that, you know, the thing you didn't want me to do? Yeah, they accepted me. Mm. And so he was like, okay, just know that when you finish with this, I wash my hands off you. Like, don't... His thing was like, and funin kwen goes, we are in jinyam, is what he papa yam. Like, you're not coming back to my house after this. Yeah. And so he was paying for, for your fees. Obviously. He was paying for fees and stuff like yeah. that. He's a big believer in education, so we were lucky in that way. Yeah. So... So but I, I think you could sense you the black sheep. <laughs> always, bro. Well, I think he should have sensed this when I dropped accounting for art. He should have known, like, we lost one. Like, you know, <laughs> he should have known then. Yeah. So I, I study, I do, I get into advertising from day one. I was at a great agency at the time called Jupiter Drawing Room. And day one, I just walk in there and I was just like, no, this wow. is not it, man. This is not it. But I did well. I went to another company called uh, Metropolitan Republic. It was a rock and roll agency. Like so how long did you star. do advertising for? So I did it formally for 2007 until I uh, left entirely 2012. Wow, that's a long time to do something. That yeah, you love, five right? years, man. Yeah, but they're man. like sex, drug, and rock and roll of yeah, advertising. Yeah, yeah. You convince yourself you're having fun. Yeah. But I always knew like this isn't... So t t take me back to the day when you're like, all right, cool, comedy. Because um, funny enough, the last time I saw Trevor Noah, mm. uh, we're working together at YFM. So I was doing this show after him. Wow, that's way back. Yeah, I tell this to everyone. To everyone. Oh, snap. That's <laughs> way back, dog. I didn't even know that guy existed back then. Damn. So um, so whenever I get a chance to tell the story. Uh, hey, you, this Just is your quit in this is your dinner table story. <laughs> oh, guys, I love sheep. <laughs> when I met Trevor and worked with him, and, uh, it's like, what? We were talking about herding. <laughs> so I'm like 18, 19. I meet him in the parking lot. He's like, yo, man, that was a lot of my last show. I'm not going to do this radio thing anymore. I'm going to focus on comedy. Oh, I'm 18 at YFM. YFM is the shit back then. You yeah. Know? I'm like, what the fuck? Are you crazy? Comedy? Comedy? Nigga, do you like broke? <laughs> <laughs> you don't like a good life. So when was that moment for you? Um, well, I think it was the first time I got on stage. So I just started working with Donovan Goliath in the last agency. I literally moved agencies and I was like, if this agency doesn't work out, I'm done with this thing. And Donovan Goliath was working there and he was just starting out in comedy. So he had a gig that he was running. And when I resigned, maybe a month later, I was taking photos at his show. Mm. I, liked, I liked photography at the time. And I was taking photos at his show. And I was like, man, 
I knew I always wanted to do this thing. Mm. So I was like, can I jump on? The lyrics comes back. Into yeah, bro. It yeah. all comes back in that yeah. moment. And and I was like, can I jump on? And he was like, sure, man. Because yeah. at the time, it was like rock and roll. Yeah, like, yeah, just yeah. get everybody on. And they were really putting guys on. No pressure. At the time, there was no pressure, you know. <laughs> no social media. So, no, 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 no. <laughs> I don't think, I'm, I was barely on, even on Twitter back yeah. then. And so I, and so I had a month to prepare a set. And Don and I were good friends at that point. And he helped me like, I remember on the day, he was like, so tell me the set you want to do. So I was like, oh, this is the set, this is the jokes. Nah, nah, nah. Mm. And he was like, yeah, I think that'll be a good set. What do you mean prepare a set? You have to prepare a set? Yeah, you can chance it uh, <laughs> and die on your ass. <laughs> we prep this shit, bro. For real? Yeah, bro. Look, you can, like. That's like can't... me preparing a radio show for a month. Yeah, you better start doing that shit. <laughs> like, that's why I don't have one. <laughs> <laughs> Look the sign like <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No bro you, you prep your You prep your set um, So you're like Alright I'm gonna go Jump into this uh, 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 Joke This is my this. opening joke okay. And it'll be followed by this joke and, mm. and I'll end on this joke And then you're on stage And they all bomb oh, C'est la vie <laughs> That's just life man So yeah, you bomb sometimes yeah, yeah. So there I was On the first show John Flissmus was hosting Oh I love him Yeah So it's fire Yeah it's fire, but he gets on, and this is this is a room that was that the Goliaths had put together to take comedy to colored people. So okay. it wasn't, uh, and and it was a colored room, and there and they were like just like the best audience you could ever have, right? Nice. So John is hosting, great comic, yeah, and great crowd, yeah. Energy's fire. So yeah. I'm in the back going, if I Tank. fuck this up, yeah. it's going to be so apparent because we want to go from wah, wah, to, <laughs> you know, what the hell is guy doing over here, bro? Who let this guy have five minutes on the stage, man? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, the silence would stand out at that moment. I was f- fully shaking, but like, full body. Not just like, you know, people go, I'm, sh- I'm nervous. I was like this, backstage. And then John was like, your next act. Yeah. I think at the time I was calling, my, my stage name was Loy Mad. Loy Mad. Loy Mad. <laughs> Sounds like a disaster. Recipe yeah, for disaster, right, right? Yeah. So when you hear that name, you're like, okay. <laughs> We're it's a be bit laughing at this guy, not with this guy. <laughs> but I killed the first show. Wow, dog it was and literally. So go back to your question: When did I know? When I walked on stage, mm. I was like, "This is where I'm supposed to be." Wow, like I was like, "I'm gonna do this forever." That was, I was like before I even you said my first, first word. Show. Before I said my first word, I knew. Wow, I was like, "This is." I feel so comfortable here. Do you like remember I'm your content? Finally. Do you yeah. remember what you were talking about? Yeah, but I remember, for a year. I remember that. I remember pretty much that whole set. Yeah. I remember that because it was a word for word set. Yeah. Like I knew what I was going to say. And first joke lands. Yeah. Second joke lands. And I'm like, oh, if you guys love this, oh, y'all don't even, y'all don't even know where I'm going with this yeah. thing. By the time I finished the last joke, right, it was, I walked off and I was like, that's dope, dude. I feel like I was in the room with you the oh, way you're describing it, bro. No, I was, it was a great gig. And then, mm. I was lucky because a few gigs after that, I think it was the, th- so I do that show. I do another show, but people didn't pitch up. It was literally just us talking to each other on the stage. <laughs> yeah. The third show I do, Don puts me on again. And he puts me on at a competition in, at Parker's Comedy Club. Oh, Parker's right? in Monty. It was like this open mic competition where the winner gets to go perform at the Nando's Comedy Festival at um, the Teatro so it's International wow, Which like. is huge Huge bro yeah. So first round I'm just like I'm just, I just wanna I'm yeah. just happy to be doing this thing bro yeah. First round I win So I was like Oh snap And Don's like Dude you could take this whole thing wow. I was like hey, Whatever Don And then next round Which is the final I win And now I'm, I'm at the Teatro With Tom Segura Who's got like Three Netflix specials Fuck now. me His wife Christina um, So we international baby We international already baby <laughs> This is gig number two, uh, gig number four or something. And Dude, so must, apart from the generators, we're not yet it easy, right? Apart from the generator, <laughs> apart from the generator, <laughs> apart from not having electricity and running water, my life's been great. <laughs> <laughs> apart from fetching water, no, my life has been uh, a cruise. It's just been smooth sailing. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's just been a grind, bro. I think it's I've, like I I always say like I always I love craftsmen. Mm. Like I would, like I loved shows on like Discovery where they just focus on some guy who makes glasses mm. or, or pots. Yeah. And I'm just like, man, that's life, man. Yeah. To have a thing that you craft and you, 
and you make it and like you just keep getting better at it so i always wanted to find a craft to be in when you skate you're not gonna be able to pay bills like did you figure out that actually i can make money from comedy no i think i think i learned earlier on a friend of mine janita who janita uh, janita lawrence now she's married um she's an author i think she was also in advertising she was my mentor actually at the time mm. she she was really into books she started a company where she could source books for you yeah. and she gave me she borrowed me a book um losing my virginity mm. um what's his name richard branson's book oh okay yeah oh yeah, yeah, yeah. she borrowed me richard branson's book i've read that i've read that and yeah. what i got from that was like mad failures yeah mad like, but he just kept Going. at mm-hmm. the thing he wanted to make mm. and i was like oh that's life yeah you just keep doing the thing there's no oh, yeah. there's no end point there's no straight nope. line there is only doing the thing so trust me if there's fr- one guy that knows about failures it's <laughs> me <laughs> still waiting for that radio show so <laughs> It's about the journey, bro. It's about the journey. Yeah, bro. man. The journey will give you. The journey is better than the end. Yeah, hundred percent. Like it's it's so it's like so I was willing to get into the journey. Yeah, it's just about figuring out. So yeah. here's my th- my theory is, know what you want. Yes, that's the hard part. Yeah, most people don't know what they want. Yeah, shit, you're right. Know what right? you want, and, and then figure out what it will take. And that's half the job done. And then just do what it'll take. Yeah. I got to quit my job. Okay, I guess we got to quit our job at this point. Oh, I got to, you know, be hungry for four months. Well, I guess we're hungry for four months. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's just what it takes at the time. So I was never really scared of not having money as much as I was scared of never giving it my full thing and looking Ooh, back and regret it. That's deep. Yeah, not to be deep. But, that's really <laughs> <laughs> but I think it's, you know, those, you know gave me that was you know you've got those cousins or those un- older uncles who will tell you about ah boy oh, I, mean, nah, I could have been hey, nah, nah, nah. I couldn't mad I always found that sad but it's like they were trying to tell, they were trying to hype themselves up but yeah. I always found those stories sad it's like but then why didn't you yeah why did you stop why so I was always stop? that's like a fear that I've had since I was a kid I was like I don't want to ever be the person who almost did mm. in my life yeah, yeah. so yeah, yeah that's my fear is not having given it the proper go And once you did it was like the best thing ever. Yeah man, it's been blazing. The community of comics is amazing. And what kind like, of comic are you? Are you like a uh, co- comedian's comedian? I don't I don't know. I- I'll say this much. Comedy is something you can do for as long as you're alive. So my thing is I'm still just figuring it out. Mm. So whatever whatever you see me at right now, I hope it's not who I'll be for a while. Yeah. Like I'm I hope my last show is different to my to the one before and i think it is and like i i still see like clips of mine from that i did i was backing up my laptop and finding old clips and i was like man good thing i don't make those kind of jokes anymore <laughs> you know like I, good thing i don't look like that on stage yeah. anymore um so you're only as good as your last show you're only as good as your last show and it's something you can really grow in a craft mm. to be in a craft is not just is to keep growing in it keep finding new layers and levels and stuff so i hope i'm not there yet yeah i, I don't want to be there yet because i don't if this is if this is it i, I <laughs> have a problem chief I'll, i'll freak out bro <laughs> yeah, yeah if yeah. this is who i am forever yeah. i think that'll that'll be shit for me and do you censor yourself because we live in a times where everybody's sensitive man you, you know you got the lgbt community you got feminists you got all sorts of stuff yeah going on. It, it's not censorship for it's in terms of yourself you got to go this is the times as a comic you're always living in the context artists live in context yeah right there were certain things that Vinci couldn't have done in his time you know because of the context he was in yeah he couldn't do maybe full sex orgy scenes because mm. they were conservative back then but he's not going there censoring me he just goes as an artist this is the these are the boundaries within which i work yeah so this is just the boundaries and the understandings and the context within which 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 we work in which shouldn't be a hindrance it should go The hindrance is how I hey, hindrance. model C private school. <laughs> I don't know if you got this in the beginning of the show. <laughs> um, yeah. So boundaries make creatives. Mm. Like like people always complain that the boundary. No, boundaries always make creatives because you gotta find a creative way. It's to like when someone goes make a joke. Mm. I go what? But then if someone goes make a joke about this for this crowd, now you're giving me boundaries. Now Boom. my brain is going. This 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 maneuver this say this and bring them in this way whatever, so, so I think uh, I think really good comics 
go, this is just the time we're in. Mm. So maneuver around that because you watch a really good comic like Louis C.K. <coughs> <laughs> <laughs> and that guy makes really edgy jokes. I'm like, he makes a joke about uh, pedophiles. Mm. With the, the gist of the joke is, it must be really nice. <laughs> but he does it so well that, yeah. sh- that he maneuvers the times we're in so he's not going... Yay, pedophiles! Mm. But he maneuvers this idea that he's built, and that's what a great comic does. A great it comic, another perspective. Yeah, I don't like comics who just come out and go, "Yo, man, whatever, man, they're feminists," and mm. that's all they're saying. It's like, okay, okay. you didn't do anything. Yeah, bro. Yeah. You, anyone can get on stage and just shout. So, are you one of those comedians that like always looking for content twenty four seven? Like you'll be on top of your woman, and you'll be like, "Oh shit, that's <laughs> a good joke." <laughs> <laughs> your titties just spark something, bro. <laughs> Lord bless your tears. <laughs> <laughs> Hold that position right quick. Let me trans. <laughs> Some comics are always on. I'm not always on. Yeah. I think I take time to digest things. It takes me forever to try to joke about something. Mm-hmm. That was the hardest thing about being on LNN because it was that day's news, that week's news, and I hadn't totally grasped it, grasped it yeah. or like... I was still angry about the thing or just emotionally in it. Mm. I hadn't found the funny in it yet. But then what I, what is great about that was you're in a room where everyone is breaking it down from different perspectives and then they're almost digesting it for you in the room and then you would come up with an idea and you go, oh, this is the funny in this thing. Yeah. But uh, when you're on your own writing something, what I found is my writing process is more like listening to myself and going, what have my... Th- what have I thought that's true to me right now? Mm. So I might think to myself, like, um, I don't know. I just, uh, or we just keep, like, a thought that I've had is, with elections coming up, is we are the definition of insanity because we keep voting for politicians ah. to fix problems created by politicians. Yeah. And I go, that's a thought. Yeah. All right, let's find and the that's, funny. that's the... D- definition of insanity That's the definition of insanity yeah. but, but we're doing it on a mass level All of us are going You know what Damn that politician yeah. Ah a politician <laughs> Comes and, and we're like Ah oh, hey, That guy was rapey eh? That guy was rapey <laughs> Ah a politician <laughs> Ah that guy stole all our money <laughs> oh, was gonna, Ooh a politician That's what we keep doing Every yeah. five years So and then now I'll try to find the jokes And how do I bring people Into this idea That I've come to And how can I make it ridiculous? I like making things ridiculous. Yeah. And once that's I what I love about truth, you, bro. Yeah. Once I found the truth of something, it's like, all right. Yeah. Now I can go wild because it's true. You know, when I found that, when I discovered that there was no record, there was no recording of Hitler's Oh, that joke was voice. funny. Oh, that was funny. Dog, do you know how oh, excited I was? that was funny. I was like, that is blazing. That means Hitler could have sounded like anything. <laughs> anything. And I was like, it's time to have fun with this idea. He could have sounded like, please do it, just, just give me a snippet. No, Hitler could have sounded like this. <laughs> he could have just been a guy wanting a sandwich. <laughs> Guys, I'm so, I'm so tired. <laughs> that could have been Hitler. Oh, so that, that was genius. So it was fun to do that bit. And I was like, this is the You're most very good fun. with impressions. Where do you get that from? Trevor's also very good with impressions. I don't know. I used to impersonate my father. Uh, I used to scare my siblings <laughs> by walking around the house laughing like my dad. Yeah. And they would think my dad's in the house and they'd pretend to be working. And then I'd walk into the room and he also had a way to open the door. He'd like, it was aggressive. Like, yeah. And, by the, and I'd, I'd just see their heads <laughs> and they'd see, they'd be so, so pissed at me. Yeah. Right? So like, you could watch my podcast and impersonate me. Eventually. eventually wow. Eventually. That's a skill on its own, bro. Uh, yeah, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Who's that? Who's impersonating? <laughs> that was just me. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I was impersonating myself. That's how good I am. That's how good I am. <laughs> uh, you got a lady in your life right now? I'm sure you have. I mean, you got a Netflix special, nigga. Yeah, yeah, I got a li- oh, Wow, really? <laughs> <laughs> What's her name? Google me, uh, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> do you know I can't wait to say that? Like, that's my... Do you know that conversation you have when you're going to confront somebody? Yeah. That's a conversation I have for somebody who gives me shit. Yeah. A stranger who gives me shit. I want to one day be able to... Go, lay some thing, Google me, bitch, and then walk away, <laughs> <laughs> and then like turn around while they're googling you yeah. to see their face go. Hey, hey, like, hey, no. I'd love to do. I'd probably never do it, but yeah. in my head, it's a great scenario. So tell me about this lady in your life. I won't. 
<laughs> Sorry, I just, that's the one part of my life I keep private. Is she, is she a high school student? No, no, no. I met her uh, five years back. Oh, five years. So when you met Trevor, two thousand four. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a good year for me. Yeah, it was, it sounds like it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was a damn good year for a brother. Five years—that's a long time in this day and age, bro. Five years is a life. Yeah, man. Look, I was not good in the streets. <laughs> I was not. I was your sh- shumi of the shumans. <laughs> Show me of the showmans, bro. I was the most single dude you could ever find. Why, in your dude? You the funny guy. No one cares about the funny guy, bro. <laughs> you the funny guy. You make people laugh, and then the girls go, go with the cool guy, <laughs> and then they go bone the cool guy, and you're like, yeah, but they like my jokes. Yes. <laughs> and then when they're done boning each other, they talk about how yeah, funny. They talk about how funny you are. <laughs> you should totally invite Lloyd. <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> it was like, nah, bro. I was mad. I was. I suck at being single. Yeah. Like even now, you're in a relationship and you like. <coughs> sometimes you're like, man. Yeah. Hey, would be nice. Bro, I'm on Netflix now. Bro. Yeah. Gonna, and you're just like, hey, you know what you you know how you are when you're single, right? Yeah. You suck. Some people are really good at being single. Yeah, yeah. Like my friends crush the single life. Not, Not me, for bro. you. Not me. I have taste. <laughs> I right, cool, my dog. So listen, uh, we're gonna. I saw on your Twitter feed that uh, you got a lot of opinions. So I'm just going to throw out some... I don't tweet that much. Yeah, well, the little oh. that I saw. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so oh, I'm just going to no. throw out some topics out there. This is how my career ends. This is what you tweeted <laughs> two years ago. <laughs> Hashtag Kevin Hart. Hashtag, oh, <laughs> it's over for me, bro. Do you know I try to go back and delete my tweets? Yeah. And then I just got bored, bro. I was yeah. like, you know what? If I go down, I go down. Fuck this it, man. <laughs> own it, bro. I suck at admin, bro. Own it. Uh, yeah, so I'll just throw out some topics out there and let me know what you think. Mm-hmm. Uh, elections are coming up. Jacob Zuma or uh, Ramaphosa? What's your take on them? Neither of them. You don't like either? No, brother. Oh, he- South Africa has a lot of politicians and no leaders. Okay. In that we have people who know how to climb the political ladder, and They made moves. Yeah. Politicians. Politicians. Yeah. They play the political game. No one is coming as a leader for the people. Mm, Mandela was a leader. Mandela was a leader. Yeah. He, and he was also a good politician at the same time. That's what made him yeah. who he was. But yeah. he made moves. Mbeki, but he also Mbeki knew, looked presidential. Mbeki was a, I feel like Mbeki should have stayed, should have been, he was a, Mbeki was a, would have been a superb, but you never get props for being a deputy president. Ah. He was he was too smart for the people. That was yeah, only his only thing. He didn't yeah. have that connection with the people. Yeah, yeah. You know, he was he's a guy with a doctorate mm, talking mm. in his doctorate way yeah. to pe- to a country where the pass rate is thirty three percent. Hundred percent. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I think if a lot he, of things flew over like a lot of things. People didn't get that guy, bro. People just didn't were like what? No. But man. as a comedian, I think Jacob Zuma gives you a lot of material. Yeah, he gave us mad material, bro. As opposed to that Seattle. guy. Yeah. He just appeared on TV and <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs> that is incredible. That is incredible. That guy was, he was the original Trump. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Trump is just another case of cultural appropriation. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> He's like, I see the Zuma guy, and I love it. <laughs> I'm going to do that on an epic level. I wish I could do a Trump. I wish I could do a Trump. I, I practice, and the more I try to do it, the worse it sounds. You know, the more I practice something, and just like, God said no on this one. <laughs> Uh, and then the old South African flag was trending recently. What's your take on that? Here's something I've realized recently. I don't care if you're racist at home. Fly your flag at home. Drop the K-bomb all you want at home. But don't do it in the streets. Mm. When you do it in the streets, I think the rule of the the law of the land applies. Because mm. <laughs> now you brought it to us, right? You brought it to the people. So the people are like, Oh, we see this. And it's this is knowledge. our honest opinion. Yeah. It's fists and feet. <laughs> <laughs> our opinion is fists and feet. I agree, Linda. Yeah, bro. So I'm just like, because uh, we, we, like, I, I, I don't think if somebody in the, pro- if you overheard somebody drop the K-bomb yeah. and they thought they were alone, mm. leave them be. Mm. It was not, but if they dared to come say it to you, mm. Call your cousins, your brother. Call your brother. Call the blacks. Yeah, just yeah. on that WhatsApp group we're all on. Yeah, that one blacks. Yeah. Call all of us. We are there. When you, when you, what boss? 
Wanyiwa Bosch. Redo the Wana Panda. That's the only sentence I know. And I'll wait for any opportunity to say that vendor line. It's the only sentence I know. I don't understand racist, dude. Like, if you hate black people, why would you come to a country where there's predominantly 90% of the people are black? Because of this, your superiority, superiority complex. Mm. You've convinced yourself that even if you're a visitor in the country, you're better than the locals. That's how, that's how it works. It's like me yeah. hating Americans and then I go live in America. That makes no sense. You'd have to tell yourself you're better than them. Then it makes sense because mm. you're going there to help them or to, you know what I mean? Because people will tell you that. Feed like, them. <laughs> yeah, because a lot of racists will say, like, we gave them education, yeah. we gave them jobs, you know, we made it better for them. Yeah. And it's like, you didn't. Mm. But you've convinced, like, the mind is very is a very powerful, po- a powerful thing because it can convince itself. Yeah. That's a weird thing, to, to like, to convince yourself of something and then you put that out into the world. So my thing is just, like, People are a product of their environment. Yeah. A lot of the time. Yeah. So I don't hate you. I hate what you do. Mm. Like to hate someone is just, it's a lot, man. Yeah. It's a lot. To it's someone. a lot of admin. But I will, I do detest certain actions. All right. EFF. Hey, EFF. Man. Hey. Hmm. I, I like, I thought of the positive. I like, what they're trying to do, mm. I don't like how they're doing it. Mm. Execution. It's very divisive. It's very, it's, it's, it's teetering on dangerous mm. because you might just be, if you look at the story of Hitler, and I know it's going to be sound extreme to compare him to Hitler, but mm. Hitler wasn't always killing Jews. At first he was just saying what the people wanted to hear. Yeah. But in then saying that he fell into a cycle of, and that's what you want to hear. And then it built and it escalated into the camps. Mm, mm. And certain things that are being said now are just like, this is what the people want to hear. Mm. But every time it starts, it keeps pushing. Mm. It keeps being pushed. I mean, like at some point you had to come back from, we will kill. And yeah. then you had to recoil from that. But that's where it had gotten to. Mm. Where it went from a political thing to message to this violent message. Mm. So I'm just like, they need, they really, especially with, our people are really desperate. Yeah. It's bad out there. Yeah, no, it's tough. It's really bad out it's there. Tough. So not like 2015. So you got to watch what you say, man. That year that was good for you. Yeah, it's not like 20, 2014. <laughs> 14, yeah. Don't ever forget. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> beep, 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 beep. <laughs> uh, men are trash. Yes and no. Mm-hmm. I think, oh, man, we just like blanket statement everything. Yeah. Like no one's here for nuance. Like only like, only certain conversations are nuanced. And so then it nev- we never move forward with anything because a guy hears men are trash, then we start getting defensive and then men start going, oh, but not all men. And then women go, oh, see, is that bullshit? Because no one ever got to the... Nitty-gritty. Never broke it down. Mm. And when you, it's only when you take the time to break things down that you can have actual discourse with the people who you're talking about. Hey, school because last, Louise, school no, last. on the real, dog, like, <laughs> like, think about it. Like, when we just go, how long has it taken, and it's still taking, to convince white people of white privilege? Mm. That's mm. because the only, only, the only thing they ever hear is the word and the framing of white privilege. Yeah. And then you watch now and then a conversation happen where somebody, and I've had to do this with my friends, I've had to be patient enough to go, okay, Here's this and the history of this and the current state of this. And I understand that you will see it like this, but that's because of this. Mm. And then you can actually watch someone's, you're trying to undo someone's lifelong thinking. Yeah, hundreds of years. Gonna, hundreds of years of cultural buildup. Mm. You're not going to do it in a hashtag. Yeah, yeah, we're, yeah. This, we're in the society where we think we're going to change the world in 140 characters. I know it's longer than that now, but we've been on Twitter, baby. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but you're not going to change the world in 140, you know, you know what I mean? Like How 140 you, characters. I'm 32. I just look young because I moisturize. Cocoa butter. You're an 87, baby. I'm an 87. Hey, that was a good year. Club, oh, yeah, dog. Yeah, dog. dog. 87 was <laughs> a year, bro. 87 was, we're just saying, for comedy, it was myself, Robbie Collins, um, um, Mo Jack Lee Hoko. Yeah. We're, we're 87 babies. We're yeah. Like, that was a, and uh, Mpo Pops, also Mpo Pops, 87. Yes, yeah. 87 was a good year, baby. Yeah, a lot a of legends year. were born in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Messi, yeah. you know. Yeah, Messi's, don't, he's an 87, he's an 87 baby. You must check the 87 babies like legends. 
Yeah, but Messi earns. <laughs> Messi oh, okay. earns my life in five days. <laughs> My whole life. <laughs> <laughs> With this, every single kick of his ball. Every time he kicks the ball, <laughs> he earns my life. <laughs> uh, the comedy scene in SA. Ah oh, man, it's so blazing, right? You should see, you should see the young acts that are coming up. Yeah. Um, some really dope guys, and it's nice because we're at this point now where it was. It's literally this year. This year is this year where. There was a build up, build up, build up, build up, build up fast. Mm. And then now things are settling um. and certain people and ideas and ways of doing things and um, uh, there's a bit of a structure now. They're, they're disappearing. Mm. And like the dust, dust is settling and we're okay. seeing who's still standing, yeah. what's still growing, mm. uh, what's moving forward. So it's like a mad, interesting time right now where I think you're going to see a more crafted version of essay comedy wow. where certain people would define the scene. Which spots are nice to go to, man? Because I used to like going to the one in Mil- uh, Melville, Underground. The Underground, man. That was dope. There's a new one now. The Goliaths have opened up. <coughs> it's a really dope room. Yeah. Uh, the Goliaths have opened up on 7th. Oh, okay. So, so Melville's still a vibe. Melville is still a vibe. There was also a room, Poppy's. It's on a break right now. They're going to bring it back. Poppy's restaurant. Okay. So Monday night comics go there just to try out new material and stuff. So if you like it raw and yeah, new I like it and raw, man, guys yeah. trying to find the yeah. Ideas yeah, on stage. Yeah, yeah. That's a really great room. There's obviously um, Parker's. Parker's is still there, baby. That, yeah. That's that was there before all of us, mm. <laughs> before Trevor. Yeah, uh, that thing was there, and and then there's just like gigs people run. Ozone in Soweto. Ozone, Ozone. Yeah, that is the craziest room, bro. You go there and you brace yourself. When? For that what room. day? That's like that room is like the equivalent of um, uh, what's that room in Harlem? Uh, the where it's just black, black people will boo you off stage. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. If you're not it's dope, cutthroat. If you're not dope, right, you'll be booed off. People will just start talking over you. It's a real room, right? You go there when you got your shit on lock, and it's been running for years. Well, when is it? Like Wednesday? Wednesday nights. Wednesday nights. Wednesday nights. Ah, cool. Tomorrow, you should check yeah. that out. Uh, Kaiser Chiefs. I stopped watching sports. <laughs> Dim da, like I know. <laughs> I used to be a Chiefs. Pa- a Ch- a Chiefs, Sharks, Man U supporter. Hey, you know, Chiefs and Man U. And then they were all lost on the same day. Yeah. Can you imagine? And I was like, why do I feel like it's about 18, 19 year olds? Why is my day shit now? Like, wh- and you watch around you and people are having a great day. And I was like, I think I'm done with sports. Yeah. I'm too old for my emotions to be based on 20 year olds playing a game. Yeah. You chose a good time to hate sports because Man is playing trash. Dude. Yeah, yeah, bro. And <laughs> I, watch, through a lot. I watch from the side and I'm just like, <laughs> I don't care. Because uh, of women. Gorgeous, mm. cause the women are, mm. and then and then we got that mix with the Khoisan. So yeah. then we've also got other levels of yeah. oh dog, yeah. But <laughs> yes. I'm there. Oh yes, <laughs> I'm Lonian. Yeah, 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 yeah. You need to be strong, bro. You yeah. need to be a stray. Yeah. Don't go there as a meek man. Literally, That's a woman there. Literally, every cause of woman I've met are literally the same. They have the same characteristic. <laughs> Even the way they I didn't talk. say this, by the way. <laughs> the opinions of Mac G do not represent the opinions of Loisa Matenga PTY LTD. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but you love cause of women, no? Oh, God. Amazing, bro. Yeah. Oh, my favorite... My favorite personalities in this country are closer women. Yeah, yeah, man. Just they just it's a it's a confidence that you don't see in everyone. Mm. Yeah, it's like really strong character. Like that's why we have Winnie Matigiza and Mandela. Mm. It's like a strong mm. confidence, self confidence. Anele, mm. you know what I mean? Uh, so Mizi. <laughs> I'm kidding. Yeah, I love him. Right. He's actually my favorite. He's my favorite person in the celebrity world. He's like so in cool. the world of like like real celebrity. I wouldn't even call him a celebrity, man. He's, he's just the nicest, he's just most a genuine person. Guy. But you know he's what I've so noticed dope. in the industry? People that are making real money, mm. messy money, mm. are the ones that are humble, like chill. Yeah, man. Like Trevor, Black Coffee, yeah. Anele, so easy. Because you just do your work. Because you know it's the work. They know. You know, if you stop working now, you fall off. Yeah. The next person picks up from where you left. And off. that's what gets them there. Yeah. You know, is to keep is to keep on that grind. Yeah. 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 To know that this is all celebrity is so. And the ones that are assholes fickle, can't bro. even apo- afford uh, the Uber ride. <laughs> I feel like you're speaking about someone. Do you want to tell us about someone, bro? <laughs> What's this person's name, bro? 
<laughs> Who's this guy you have to pay an Uber for, bro? <laughs> <laughs> this has got real. That's so specific. Can't afford an Uber uh, ride. Blesses. What's the take on blesses? Places. Blesses. Like blesses. Yes. They're a necessary evil. Mm. Do you know, this is my thing on, on, you must decide what kind of rich you're going to be before you're rich <laughs> or else you end up doing what you've seen other people do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. You end up buying the rich people car, yeah. buying the rich people house. Because you know house. nothing else. That's what blessers are. Mm. Those are people who never figure out, so they think that <laughs> they grew up with seeing guys get women. Yes. They saw, the, the rich guy gets the woman. So yeah. they think he must be paying for them. Mm. Right? So that's all they are. Yeah. There's no malicious intent. They just don't understand Wealth. They're the, right? girls, they're the guys in high school that never got the girls. Exactly. And then now they have money. Like now they have money. It's the only way they know how to get the girls. <laughs> and the girls, are f- they're smart. We look down on blessies. They've they've peeped, peeped the game, bro. Yeah. They've gone. These guys will spend. Mm. So why not spend on me? Mm. And I'm just there to be spent on. Mm. Like the wife is there to actually do the hard work. The wife is there. <laughs> the hard <lady> listening <laughs> to this guy, taking care of this guy's kids. <laughs> this girl has to party with this man and now and then suck a dick. I mean, <laughs> now and then a dick must be sucked. So you know I mean? I mean, like, why are we judging them? Yeah. Those guys have peeped the game. So yeah. it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's an ecosystem that works. I think it's like one of the most perfect ecosystems because yeah. everyone knows and agrees what they're in for. Mm. You and I are in relationships where we're constantly fighting because we don't, we don't actually know what we're in for. Yeah. You're in for something, she's in for something and you're trying to we find it as we go along. As you're going along, yeah. you're like, oh, oh, oh she doesn't suck the dick. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh which, do I live? Do I stay? Yeah. Um, <laughs> so they're in actually, they're in perfect relationships. Yeah. And then uh, let's, uh, lastly, music. A.K.O. Casper. I'll, this is why I'll say neither. Okay. I like artists who s- who are their own thing. Mm. And there are some people And it's not hate yeah. I think those guys Are really good at Being dope At a trend No I see Do you know what I mean I see yes And that's a skill yeah, On, yeah. on its own yeah, to, yeah. To, to see the thing And go Oh I'll just hop into this And I'll hop It's like Jennifer Lopez Jennifer Lopez is huge But she just always Jumped on trends mm. And she's being dope at that Yeah She's really Consistent. dope at that Consistently mm. So I was just like Nah I like people who You know so Taught their who, own parts Who would that be? Um, WHP Yeah That guy was like Always on his own path yeah. Grew his own audience yeah. Doing that um, I'm like People argue with me Yeah but he never Made the money Or whatever mm. These real rappers Whatever, whatever man For me Personally yeah. I like But his legacy people. still His legacy We're was not talking about him. How much money Now Bruh We still listen to yeah. Harambe To Harambe, this day yeah. Tell me which song From AKA's first album Do you still listen to I don't know But I think He makes classics <laughs> And the answer was I don't know. Don't try, don't continue afterwards. The answer was I don't know. Everything after but is, is nonsense. It's over, bro. <laughs> My argument is is proven. Like, yeah, you yeah. You like mumble rap. It's all good. It's fun, bro. I'll be in the club, in there with trap music. Hmm. But we don't even listen to last year's songs anymore. Hey, last year, bro. Shit, dude. We get tired of these tracks within three months. We're like, what else are you releasing? Yeah. Because the the song comedy's not like that, ne? Huh? Comedy's not like that. Because no, it's ever growing. It's ever growing. Yeah. You, you're always evolving. And it's life. It explains life. Yeah. It's like social commentary. Yeah. So you. It's, oh, look. Some people get lost, but some people are still doing jokes where you're like, man, that's some 90s ass jokes. <laughs> this guy's still doing 90s humor. Wow. He, he needs to play for a month. Yeah, but, you know. The, the, the Seinfeld said comedy is a self filtering game. Yeah. You can't fool this game, bro. I've always liked comedians, man. I don't know why, man. I just like Oh man oh, It's that's comedy It's like escapism say, I, don't understand. Understand. I don't like comedy You don't like laughter Ah, You know who I love? Eddie Griffin man That guy's funny So good Oh that guy's funny Eddie Griffin is so I don't wonder why he has not Released anything Released anything yeah. bro Because that guy was just He was like Very good at the times Yeah He was really good at keeping up With what's happening And having like a real His own like Angle on things And, yeah. and um, Fresh things on it I actually wonder why he's not so Louise, thank you so much for chilling with me, bro. Like, thank I you. Appreciate that, it, it's man. over. Oh, man. Yeah, that it was went dope. quick, man. Yeah. yeah. That was dope. Congrats uh, on this show, bro. Thanks, man. Appreciate this thing it, man. is blazing. Yeah, this yeah. thing is really nice. Uh, so make sure you mention it on your next uh, Netflix special. That we mentioned it. <laughs> yeah, just say I was doing an interview on a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't have to do anything with the joke. 
I was doing this, I'm doing a podcast and actually, and I talk to my girlfriend. My girlfriend <laughs> is a. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so what are you busy with right now? Can you expect another next? Right now I'm currently doing my new one man show that I'm touring. Nice. I just did it. It's called Problem Child. I just did it here in Joburg. It's going to Nell Sprite, East Is London, that like PE. you have to do a one man show? Like when you become no, it's just, it's, so it's, famous. At some point at some point I can't I feel like it's it's not enough time to do what to portray the messages or the ideas I want to do within the ten minutes or the fifteen ah, minutes I've been allocated. And you also you gather so much material yes. that you go, I have a show now, oh, yes. and I have time to really get into ideas. And it's all and about stuff. you, man. And it's all about you, yeah. and the people come specific because often time we're doing comedy to people who might not know you. Yeah. Didn't come out for, for you. you. Yeah. They've never heard your style of comedy. True, true. So you're convincing people all the time. Yeah. And then when you finally get to do your one man, it's like people who go, I like that. I want a lot of that. Yeah. Uh, or they bring someone on board who might not know you and they watch you. Or you or you just get to expose yourself in your entirety to new people who yeah. are not about you. Yeah. And you get to put that out. So I enjoy the one doing for an hour and a half. Or you can just shoot a comedy. Netflix special while you're. <laughs> Yeah, but I, I like touring. Yeah, yeah. I like touring because you get to grow within a show. Because once you shot groupies like DJs and hip hop. Yo, comedians have mad groupies. You're bro. kidding! Comedians what? Have mad groupies. You lie. <laughs> we're just not vocal about it. Yeah, we're, we're not about the groupies. Ah, that's what they all say. <laughs> <laughs> we're not. We're not about the groupies. Hey, babe. I love you. <laughs> love you so much. I've never loved so much in an episode, man. <laughs> Shit. Yeah, right, cool. One Man Show. One Man Show Problem Child is touring around the country. Um, and then I'm just grinding, bro. Yeah. I, grinding. I don't know how big you are like now, but I see you as the next big thing, man. Like to come ah, out of this country, you, dude. Like, fuck, I see you doing like what Trevor's doing, you know, the Daily Show one thank day you. or something similar to that. Yeah, man, I'm trying to get back into acting. Oh, okay. That was my, that was my first love. Wow. So I've turned back into acting classes. Because you, you never really stop growing, creative. man. Yeah, you really you are never creative. stop growing. So I go back to learning how to act properly and yeah. um, uh, just finding more spaces to create. I need to be better online. Yeah. I need to create more oh, content really? for myself I'm online. I'm just like you, bro. I, I'm, uh, yeah, I don't that, know. The that train has missed, missed no, me. No, bro. It's, uh, it's just starting, bro. <laughs> the train is. I promise you, you can, you can be the next. Your own channel, as in, like, you can be your own Comedy Central Fox TV yeah. online. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's the space we're in. That's yeah. it. Because also, beautiful, th- eh? think about no one has really claimed Africa as a space in terms of being the content hub, hub or provider. Yeah. So we're still in a space where those are the trying, kinds man. of worlds we still have to open up. We try, man. One subscriber at a time. Yeah. That's how we want to do it, baby. Yeah. All right, Lisa, thank you so thank much. Thank you, bro. bro. I'm going to come check you out. So you tonight you're out in Taboo, eh? I mean, yeah, yeah. Tonight I'm at Tabu. That's chill. That's chill. Tonight I'm at Tabu. Uh, but watch my pro- my show, Problem Child. Okay, cool. And yeah. we had social media vibes. Boom, boom, boom. Luisa Matenga everywhere. Yeah, yeah. All on social media. Yeah. I can't believe it's such a mind fuck, dude. I can't believe you here the whole time. I'm thinking you would travel that that side. Man. No, no, but my Instagram is blazing. <laughs> <laughs> my Instagram will make you think my life is <laughs> so lit, <laughs> so lit. <laughs> That's Lisa Matiga. Make sure you check him out. We are here. Boom. Podcast and chill. Matt G, the ghost lady, and Len Moleko.